Hi guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how we can generate core sticks in Cinema 4D. So, let's just get straight into it. What are core sticks? Now, I've got a couple of examples here. This is a very good example. Um, core sticks are basically this light effect that we got on the surface of the desk or whatever this uh, cup sat on here. Um, and it basically describes how light is hitting a curved surface and whether by reflection or refraction, um, it will create sort of lensing effect. So uh, light bunches up, it, it creates an envelope where it can gather light. Um, another example of this would be quite a common one. You've probably seen it before in swimming pools. So again, you've got this non-uniform surface at the top, the light hits it, it's transmitted through the fluid, and then you'll get this sort of gathering is bunching up of light on the um, the bottom there. So this is what we're going to try and recreate in Cinema 4D. So let's just get on with it. <laughs> okay, so let's just set our scene up first. I'm going to use a platonic object because it's got some nice angles on it and uh, it should give us a nice result. I'm also going to need a floor. Also going to need a sky. Um, and uh, I'm just going to move the platonic up as well. So its radius is 100 centimeters. So we'll move it up 100 in the Y. And also I'm just going to change my display to ground shading lines so I can see what's going on. You'll notice that the edges of the platonic are quite, quite sharp. So I'm just going to smooth that up a little bit by um, going into my deformers and choosing the bevel tool, making it a child of the platonic. And if we go to the option tab, I can then say, I can choose uh, what the offset is. Three should do, and I'll give it a few subdivisions. Um, let's just render that. You'll see that we can see the uh, faceting on the edges here. So I want to smooth that off. Uh, for some reason, the platonic doesn't have a fong tag on it when it's created. Uh, so I'm just going to right click Cinema 4D tags, go down to fong, and then I'm going to say angle limit, Give it, I don't know, 45 degrees, something like that. Uncheck edge, edge breaks. So that should be a nice smooth. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay, that's that. Um, we're going to need a material for our floor as well. So I'm just going to create a material. Turn on reflectance. We're not going to need that. And I'm just going to rename this floor. Lovely. And I'm going to make the color dark so it shows up our core sticks a little bit better. I'm not going to go fully black because nothing's fully black. So around this region will do. That should be dark enough. We'll apply that to our floor. And Bob's your uncle. Okay. So render settings. Let's open this up. As always, I like to use the physical renderer. Um, and in the physical settings, you probably see me do this plenty of times if you've watched my tutorials. Adaptive, I'm going to go to automatic and then the shading error threshold can be about 15. That'll do us for the output. I'm just going to drop down here, go to film and video and 1080 at 24 frames a second. And then I can lock that ratio and just drop it down to 800 so we get some faster renders. Um, if we go to the anti-aliasing tab, everything's fine there. So let's just give this a quick render to the picture view. There we go. You can see some of the ones that I've done previously there, my test, test renders. In fact, while we're there, I'll clear these so it doesn't interfere. Do, 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 do. Remove all images. There we go. Okay, so refresh. There we go. Um, okay, so what next? We're going to need... Um, let's create a sky material for our sky as well. So we'll just call this sky. Um, take off the color and reflectance because we just need the luminance channel. Uh, I'm just going to open up the uh, content browser and you can see I've already got my HDR up here. So I just lob that in there. So I'm going to get old think about it. There we go. And I'm going to lob that on my sky object. Very good. Uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like in the editor, to be honest, because um, 
I'm going to put a compositing tag on this anyway, so it's not seen by the camera. Not that it would be anyway, I don't think, but um, let's go into our render settings and add the global illumination. Oh, I added the wrong one there. Remove that. Okay. Okay, so global illumination. Boo, boo, boo. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to do a quick test render of that. Yeah, it seems to be lit. The reason I, I put global illumination on is because I just wanted an ambient, because um, I'm actually going to be lighting this with a spotlight, um, but I just wanted an overall ambient um, sort of feel to it as well, so that's why I've added that. Okay, so spotlight. So if you go up to our lights, hold it down and go to our spot. We've got spotlight there. Um, Just gonna put it up here, drag it up, give it a little rotate down. Um, I'm gonna make the spot a little bit wider as well. Okay, so that's good. I'm also gonna select the light and go to the basic tab, uh, note general, and I'm gonna Turn on the shadows, area shadows, just so we get a uh, nice result from that. There we go. Yeah, that was good to me. Right, now we get to the, uh, the actual caustics. So, um, I'm going to need to make a material for our platonic. So, I'm going to call this glass. Um, now we don't actually need the color or the reflectance, which you'd find weird, but um, we just need the transparency. So if we turn that channel on, we can see we've got a completely transparent um, material there. So if I actually apply this to the platonic and then render, you'll see that it is practically invisible. And that's because we need a refraction preset. So uh, luckily if you drop down here, it's already got glass, so we can select that and um, it will give us an, a good preset. If Actually, if you right click on the refraction preset and say show help, it will take a second, but um, it will give you uh, some information about it. I think there's an index somewhere as well, actually. Uh, I think that's if you go to help on this refraction value here. Um, well, maybe it's on the same page, but I do know there's a uh, there's a uh, index somewhere. Um, yeah, there's a nice list they provide for you. I'm not quite sure where it is, but it's it's in the help somewhere. Um, so now we've got our refraction on our object, um, we should see that it actually is there. There we go. So it's refracting the scene, and it does look like glass. So that's that's good. Uh, the reason that we don't need uh, reflection is because if we actually go into the reflectance channel, you, you can see that it's added this transparency and it's sort of greyed out. So it's kind of, it's made it, it's taken its reflectance values into account just from the transparency, if you like. So it's kind of taken care for you. It's, uh, it's got, it's taken care of even. Okay, so let's get on with this. So the caustic side of things, um, as you can see, there are no caustics, which is, is no good. Um, so we've got to actually enable this stuff. So if we go to our render settings and then go to effect, you'll notice that there's something here called caustic. So let's go and turn that on. Uh, we've got options for surface caustics and volume caustics. We're not going to worry about volume caustics because, um, uh, well, maybe I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you them at the end. Um, it's to do with um, sort of transmitting through a volume, I suppose. But it's not going to make any difference to what we're trying to do. We could try, we just want the surface caustic, so. Okay, so we just turned that on. Um, that's good. You'd expect a result now. Well, guess what? Nothing's going to happen because you've also got to turn on a setting in your light source as well. So if you actually select our light, it's actually got a tab called caustics here and then we can check on surface caustics. 
So let's just give this a render and see what happens. Now you can probably notice there's some dots on the floor now, which is what we're looking for. But it's not very convincing, and there's a couple of reasons for that. If we go to the render settings and go to our caustics tab, um, we have a strength here, and it's at 100%. Um, now I'm pretty sure it works on the light intensity as well. In fact, we could we could test that now if we want. But um, you'll notice that in the picture viewer it looks quite sort of blotchy. And that's to do with this value here, the amount of photons. So you can kind of see this as your your samples, like you would normally in in a render. You know, if it's if you want to sort of smooth things out, or get more detail, you'd put your samples up. So this is kind of what this is. So let's just put add a zero in there, so it's a hundred thousand photons, and give it another render, and see what we get. So we can compare these two so there's a little bit more definition in there now um, which is nice but I'm gonna turn this up to a million is that a million yeah okay good and give that a render okay so we can see we've got a lot more defined now so there's the first one, second one, third one. So it's very defined, which is great. Um, but we may w want the effect to be a bit stronger. I mean, that's probably quite sort of realistic in the levels you get. Let's see if uh, turning up the um, intensity of our light actually helps. So let's put this up to 150 and uh, give that a whirl. So yeah, you can see the caustics have got brighter. Um, so has everything else though. So there's another alternative that you can do. So if I drop the light back down to 100, 100% of its intensity, and then go to the um, render settings, caustics tab, and then actually kick this strength up by a factor of 10. And then render again. There we go. Very, very prominent now. I'd say that's a bit overkill, to be honest. Um, but you can definitely see what's happening. <laughs> so that's how you uh, that's how you get your cause effects. So I may want to just dial this down a little bit. So maybe a five hundred. Oh, not five thousand. Yeah, it's a little bit more subtle, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, so that is basically how you get your caustics working in Cinema 4D. You've got to uh, set it on in the, in the light, and your photons are kind of like your samples, and you've also got to enable it in your render settings, um, and you, you get this wonderful beautiful effect there and obviously um, depending on your lights location to your object and your, your objects orientation it's going to affect the outcome of that as well so um, if I was to animate the rotation of this object obviously from another another perspective you're going to get a different light pattern it's going to be uh, it's going to be different in fact, what I may do is uh, create a um, looping WebM for the website where this is rotating and um, it's got this uh, uh, caustic animation. So that might be something I'll look at, actually. So anyway, that, that about wraps it up, guys. Um, that's how you generate caustics within Cinema 4D. Uh, don't forget to check out the website, um, digitalmeet.uk and uh, obviously the Facebook and the Twitter. Um, yeah, so that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye.